I think this is a good time to talk about something that I don't think many people have seen. And while I'm talking about the technology and what I really like about this, um, I'm going to ramble a bit. It's probably you may have been used to if you watch a couple of my videos, I'm good at that, about what's happened with technology in schools um, and laboratory science at that. So what I have here is the Lab Cradle for the TI Inspire series calculators. And if you haven't used one of these, um, they have a really cool ability to run Python code and... Um, uh, I don't know how to describe this. It, I've got a collection of... Oh, that reflection on the screen is pretty bad. Let me just kill the uh, kill the Altair for a second. So these calculators um, are a big step up. If you use the old TI-83s or the TI-86s, um, because they've got the CAS, um, and the ability... The, what CAS lets you do is you can basically type in an equation just as you see it, not even understand how to use it uh, or how to process the equation, and it will figure everything out for you. I mean, you know, uh, and kind of show you the solution. So it's a bit like being able to ask Wolfram Alpha to solve something for you, uh, in addition to being able to run Python, which I have an example of here. So um, this this is a really cool tool, though. Um, why TI has not released a software application um, to do some of this, I don't know. I mean, actually, I do know. It's because they have a, a thing with the standardized testing services. Uh, but I don't think this is what I love the most about this product. I was able to find a couple of these online. I unfortunately had to buy a bigger pack because somebody wasn't just selling one-offs that were functional. So this is a lab cradle. It can be used with or without the calculator docked. You notice there's a bed of contacts here for the lab cradle. And on the back of the calculator, there's a cool little trap door that opens and exposes a surface board contact. Um, and so what you do, and I'm doing this one-handed, is I set the... Uh, calculator on the cradle and there is a nice little engagement on the side. And you see it's going to slide down those rails and it's going to push that door open and it's going to contact very smooth and there's a lock I can do. I'll just push up on this little catch right here and that will lock the calculator in place to the dock and whenever I dock to the lab dock the first thing that's happening is going to bring up the lab dock software and I really love this because these sensors are super cheap, and I can use this as a poor man's data logger. Um, there were a couple of videos I've seen with Fluke and other, uh, you know, proper data logging instruments for lab. But what I like about this is I can go on eBay and I can find these instruments, oftentimes unused, and it's a rant I'll get into. Um, darn near for cheap or free. So I'm gonna plug in a temperature sensor right now. Just gonna shove that cable in and it's going to automatically detect it. I'm assuming it's through resistance, right? Um, and there is, let me get this lead moved around here. There's a nice little temperature sensor. So um, I can then use this cursor. I do not like this user interface as much as the older ones, but I'm going to change this to freedom units. Boop. This is hard to do looking through a camera. It's even worse. Uh, there you go. Okay, so we're now on freedom units, and you can see this this temperature sensor is doing its job. So as I plug the sensors in, they automatically start working. Well, I'm going to pull another one off the shelf here that's one I rather enjoy, which is a magnetic field sensor. I've got them kind of tied up here on the shelf. Pull this one down. It's going to measure uh, Gauss. Uh, maybe in micro Tesla. I don't remember what it was using for its default measurement. We're going to plug that sensor in the other port here. Oop, wrong way. It's a really interesting connector, too, by the way. Um, all right, plug that in. And this is the magnetic field sensor. And, yep, it's using micro Tesla. So, what I find fa fascinating... Oh, it's probably... That's actually millitesla, I guess. Um, good old SI units. So, uh, I, I buy these on eBay, and more often than not, they're brand new in packaging. And what's frustrating to me... Um, and it, I, I went to public school in general, but I, I think, uh, I'm frustrated by the fact that schools buy this really cool hardware and then never get to use it with students. I'm not an educator. I don't pretend to be, 
but I had really good educators, um, and we did use some lab view stuff. Uh, and I, I was, you know, very blessed to have, you know, good, good science instruction. I absolutely loved. And while we didn't use this particular dock hardware or anything else, we did have uh, at the time there was um, some old OS nine Apple hardware with some data loggers, and it worked great. And it was really nice to be able to sort of, you know, measure instantaneously and do some good data logging and do some reporting and analysis. And I think that's important for um, our kids in K through 12. What's frustrating is I go to buy this stuff on eBay and I can find it super cheap. It's being dumped and it's never been used. Somebody bought it with tax money and it just sat on a shelf because I, I can't fathom why you would never use this. So anyhow, that's, that's, that's part of my rant. Let's see. Um, and then I've even got cool stuff here. There is a, this is a gas pressure detector. Um, a little pressure sensor. I'm, I'm not going to unbox it and plug it in. But basically, um, I've got a photo sensor. And then I've even got, let me see if I can find it over here and get it free. I have a bunch of cables to my left as I'm rambling here. Uh, I'm going to free this one up. I might just drop some of this on the floor as I'm trying to free it. And uh, this... If I can get it over here without making too much of a mess, is the pH probe. Little pH sensor, and it sets inside of a buffer solution to make it happy, but that is an electronic pH probe. So I could plug that in and measure pH right now. Um, and again, all, all these instruments that plug in this data logger are very easy to use, and they're relatively robust. Um, you know, it's made for education. They're not like NIST traceable, obviously. Um, but if you're wanting to do some real simple measurements, it's kind of nice to have them. Now, there's also just a basic 0 to 5 volt um, input uh, that goes straight in. On the other side, they have these uh, digital inputs, Sonic as well. And it actually has, I, I didn't get any because I had no interest in them, but they have an acoustic um, uh, little uh, sonar rangefinder. Looks like the old school rangefinders on a Polaroid camera if you ever had one of those. Um, and you can use that for, you know, tracking distance. And on the other side, you've got, you know, three channels here. So there are three channels I can put for what I'd call normal sensors I actually care about. And then there's the two digital sensors that I, frankly, have never used and had no interest in because this uh, this is the place that made all the sensors for this, the Vernier Corporation. And I think they've actually quit selling the lab cradle. And I think they've quit selling the sensors, which is just a real shame. Um... Because it was really cool, and I can I can chart this data. I'm not going to go into like using the CAS with this, or sorry, the, using the Inspire calculator with the data logging capability. I'm just curious how many of you may have actually used this in high school. Now this this is after this entire this entire product line was after I was graduated and, and definitely out. But uh, I'm just I'm just curious if anybody else feels the same way about science education in this country. I think we spend a ton of money on brand new football fields, and you know. Uh, stuff like that, but then we have science and math programs that we, we didn't dump a whole lot into. And maybe that's changed. Um, maybe that's changed now. We're dumping a lot of money into STEM and we're dumping a lot of money into science. But I, what I'm afraid of is whenever I see in our industry, and my industry is information technology, uh, I see us talk about STEM with kids and it's like point and click and drop and drag software development when really what would be fun is, you know, learning to use a TRS-80, you know, like... Um, learning to learning to do programming stuff, but that's that's what would have been entertaining to me. Um, you know, I I'm sure if you told some kid, you know, let's let's work up on the Unreal Engine and play with doing you know some some software development to build some game stuff, you could probably get a lot of interest. Um, I just don't know what people are doing to keep science relevant for kids, and that's really what I'm curious about. So anyhow, th this video talking about the uh, TI Inspire line of calculators, how much I absolutely love this data collection cradle, how much I use it for personal lab garbage uh, when I need a little bit of you know magnetic field measurement or temperature measurement I can do some data logging and this was all eBay cheap 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 because schools were dumping it because it's trash no one wants it and again stuff was still in the wrapper a lot of it was never used uh, th these were still brand new in box the this this gas uh, pressure sensor still has the instruction manual and everything else and it. it's never been used it is brand new it is all steel packed so um yeah, that's about all I got on this. Uh, a bit, a bit of a ramble here. It's it's ten minutes or so of me rambling about this. I am curious. You leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, you know, uh, you guys feel the same. And, and and this is a very U.S. Midwest specific statement. 
I, I'm actually curious, like if you were on a coastal school, if you were in a, you know, a certain area in California, or if you're over in New York, uh, you know, uh, east or west coast, did you have a very different experience? Uh, I, I, I'm just curious. So I don't know how many of you have used this stuff before. I hope um, maybe I've convinced people to go out on eBay and re relive their uh, their TI glory days of writing terrible software on TI calculators, uh, and maybe even get pick up a lab cradle if you can get so lucky to find one. Uh, and, and play with it. So anyhow, with that, um, that's all I got to say.